Hey everyone, I'm Army Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. All right, you guys have been wanting me to review this monster, so let's get right into it. Meet the quest monster, Pierside. Pierside is a dark cooldown activator and possessor. She can apply possession and activate an enemy's cooldown, as well as applying tortures, nightmares, and curse to them. She has a skill that allows her to apply a three turn death countdown and even paralyze her enemies from stopping the countdown. What? Her trait is abomination, meaning she's immune to possession, and that's all types of that's all types of possession exclusive to nightmares and bleed, and she can cast true vision upon herself at the beginning of the battle. So basically, with true vision, she can't miss her denial, and then she can death countdown, she can possess, she can apply torture effects. This is going to be one of the best monsters that has ever been released into the Monster Legends world, and you can get her simply by breeding specific monsters which will then give you a key and that key will allow you to play her survival dungeon and then if you beat that survival dungeon i believe you get 50 cells for her and if you if you so it's not enough to craft her right so you're gonna have to trade with some teammates because even if you do manage to breed one of the monsters you only get 15 cells so first i'm going to talk about how to get this monster and then we'll get into the actual analysis so if you go to the right hand side and you click on pure side quest let's see what it says so this is your chance to get some dark monsters. Breed Countess Flawless, Morton McBlood, and Krampus by combining Dark Ghouls and Rock Antium. So first of all, a huge props to Social Point for making this monster really accessible to anyone. Rock Antium is a breedable monster. So is Dark. Both of them are breedable. So if you don't have them by now, um, you know, you can't really blame Social Point. They made it really, really easy. You know, they didn't use some really hard exclusive to get monster that only certain players have, that long-term players have, that pay-to-win players had. No, they used breedables. And furthermore, if for some reason you don't happen to have one of those, you can use one of the breeding jokers, either Violet or Galante. So I always tell people, get yourself a set of the three breeding jokers, Galante Jr., Violet, and Galante, because they can always be used to replace someone. So if you can replace Rockantium with Galante, or you can replace Dark with Violet. And again... If you breed um, Countess, if you breed Mud Blood, if you breed Krampus, you get yourself 15 cells. So again, if you get 50 from the Survival Dungeon and 15, that's only 65, you're going to need additional cells to be able to craft this monster before you can use Dark Cells or Elementium. You could also trade with your teammates. So even if you only breed one of them, like you're still good. Just trade with your teammates. That's how I was able to get O'Reilly. That's how I was able to get um, Clipium, the previous quest monster, and I think I was able to get some other monster. Anyhow, scrolling down, if you get one of the three monsters, you'll obtain a quest key, which will unlock the survival dungeon, where you can get the monster. Um, but that's not all. For each event you breed, you'll get 15 cells. And again, you have to you can the maximum cells you can get is 45. If you breed 10 Krampuses, you don't get 150 cells, you only get 15. So you get 15 for each different monster, okay? If you haven't been lucky with your breedings, you can get the quest key and cells in a chest. So I haven't been lucky so far. I'm considering maybe putting some gems apart to purchase that chest because I really desperately want this monster. The survival dungeon will start on Friday the 17th. So let's say you already bred the monster and you're like, hey, where's my key? Where's the event? You don't get the monster automatically. You don't get the dungeon automatically. You have to wait until Friday the 17th, okay? At 10 universal time. But with the latest, and you also need to up, make sure you have the latest version of the game. So you'll get the key after a successful breed. And in order to get the quest key and the cells, the monster needs to be on the hatchery before the breeding event is over, not after. So if you have a monster, if it's a legendary, you better speed that monster up if the event is about to end. Because if you get that monster into the hatchery after the breeding time is over, which as of the time making this video is two days and three hours, you will not get the quest key. Okay, I gotta emphasize that because some players have, have not paid too much attention to that. So this is my baby account, and as you can see, I haven't spent any gems on here. Whoops. I haven't spent any gems on here, but I've failed three times. I have a Hyperion, I have a Tartarus. This was, okay, you know, I failed twice, or three times, because this is an epic over here. I accidentally bred, um, what did I breed? I bred, like, I think I accidentally bred Rockantium and some other Magic Earth monster and got Tartarus, so that was a waste. But yeah, I've only, yeah, I guess I've only tried three times, so hopefully on video, four times the charm, and I'm able to get... The monster so let's sell this and bam so it's a prototype period and we'll click repeat i'll close my eyes and i got six hours and 35 minutes so unfortunately that is not a uh, legendary and on this account because it's my baby account i have not bred the 
the breedables. Watch if I if I scroll down, if I scroll to legendary, all of the breedables I don't really have except Vatamagma Rockantium. So I really should make them. I really should. But I do have the jokers. Anyhow, scrolling up, um, this is gonna be active for nine more hours, ten more hours almost. So what I'm going to do in ten hours, this will be ready. And if if I don't have this in my hatchery, when Camella runs out, the time will basically reset. Or not reset, but it'll go back to whatever time it was before the before the fast breeding is on. So I got to make sure to put this into my hatchery. So I'm going to have to end up paying like 10 gems to speed one of these epics so I can try again. So hopefully then I'm lucky. As for my other accounts, let's see how I'm doing on there. So as for my main accounts, I haven't been so lucky. I have, check it out, I have two Spongebobs, Soap Sam, Depressed Spongebob. I have Hyperion, which I don't mind, he's a good epic. Pandolfio, which I don't mind, he's a good epic too. I have a rank 2 one already. I got Prototype Hyperion, and I got a Posty Garf, which is somewhere over here. So I've I've tried 6 times and I failed. I've spent 40 gems because I spit up 2 of them. And these 2 right here are also failures. So I've actually, I've tried 8 times and I've spent 40 gems. So not too happy about my gem spending, but it's not that bad. As for Camilla, she's going to expire in 15 hours. So that's why I haven't done anything with these two. Um, my plan right now is to wait the 13 hours and 49 minutes. Yeah, my plan is to wait that time. And then that way, you know what? You know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to speed up. So for the purpose of this video, let's speed up. So I told myself I would spend a good amount of gems to try to get pure side. So let's do it. Let's speed up. Let's speed up Spongebob and Pandolfio because they cost the least. Alright, success. And then, because I see, yeah, this has 15 hours. So I'll be able to speed up these two and try again even. So let's do this. Prototype Perion and Prototype Perion. Okay, looks like he's going to get ranked up. So I always tell myself I feel more lucky when I do it manually than when I click repeat like I did on my baby count. So let's do Dark and Galante first. So breed Galante, oh I mean breed, to breed some one of the dark monsters I need dark and Galante. So I always have this habit of just scrolling and scrolling like alternating sides. I just realized I did dark and dark so let me do dark and magic. So first I'll scroll to the left then I'll scroll to the right and I already found Galante. Now I just need to find dark. And where is he? Where is he? Let's keep on scrolling. I think I passed him. Let's go find him. Yeah, I feel like when I manually do it, I have more luck. I don't think there's any system or anything. It's really just a it's RG, R, a random number generator, R, RNG. So I'll either get him or I won't get him. And I can't even see him. Uh, where are you, Dark? I need you. I need you. Where are you? I can't find you. Um, Scrolling, scrolling. Where is he? What in the world? Okay. Wait, what? So maybe because I can't find him, this is a good sign. Oh, I found him. He's right above Pandolfio, I think. Pandolfio's level one. There he is. Okay. And I, I named him Keep for VIP for when they did VIP breeding events. So I always like to match them up right next to the heart. And first I'll click on Dark. And then I'll click on Galante. I'll click Start Breeding. I close my eyes and I always hope it's a Legendary. And in 6 hours and 35 minutes, it is not a Legendary. So that's unfortunate for me. But I have one more try. So... I'm going to make sure it is Violet and it is a Rock Antium. So I will click Breed, Violet, so I'll sort by Magic, Rock Antium, so I'll sort by Earth, and I will scroll and try to find Violet and Rock Antium. And again, I always alternate sides. I don't know why, but that's just the way I do it. So let's see who I find first. That's a Galante, I need a Violet, there's a Rock Antium, and now I just need to find Violets. So Violet is here. Once again, I will put them down right below the heart, it's just the way I do things. I will do Violet, I will do Rock Antium, I will start breeding, close my eyes. And is it 9 hours? It is not 9 hours. 9 hours 11 minutes would indicate a Legendary. And then even if you get a Legendary, it's scary because it might be one of the parents. And then that won't yield the key. So I've used up more gems. I'm still unlucky. My gem count is depleting. Once again, this ends in 15 hours. So in 15 hours, I'm going to speed up these two. I'll speed up these two bad boys, and then these will be ready, so I will hatch them, and I get two more tries with reduced speed. And if that doesn't work, honestly, at that point, I might not even try anymore, and I'll just have to wait until I can get pure side some other time.
But anyways, with that being said, with how to get this monster with my progress, let's get into the actual analysis of this monster. Is she worth getting? Based on that initial description, heck yes. But now let's actually analyze her. So, she has a life stat of 37,096. She has a power of 3355, but most importantly, and first of all, she's quite tanky. Most importantly, she has a speed stat of 3575, making her one of the faster dark monsters in the whole entire game. And just so I don't brush over her life stat, it, it really is one of the tankier ones, especially for a monster that's this fast. Right now, the tankiest dark monster is Raw with a life of 46,000, then is Soul Hugger with 44,000, but after that is Necromancer, the War Master, with 38,000. Also counts as flawless and war spells. So this monster with 3796 is actually tied with Samuel the Fever Scatter. So yes, quite tanky. Not that many monsters have a higher life than her. And then again, her speed stat. This is one of the fastest. It's actually tied with the fastest. Counts as flawless, one of the breedable monsters. So we officially have the fastest dark monster, or tied for the fastest dark monster, and also quite tanky. But more importantly, this monster has Abomination and True Vision. So unlike Counts as Flawless, who may miss, especially when going up against Hardened Plus monsters, this monster will not be missing her Denial. For Relic, she can hold the Mask and the Amulet. So Amulet, there's so much you can use, right, to increase survivability. With the Mask, she can get a Healing Mask to increase survivability. She can do Exhausting Mask to drain stamina if she gets attacked. She can, there's just so many. If you have Talonese Mask, she can give a shield to her whole entire team at the start of the battle. There's just so much you can do with this monster, a monster of this magnitude. For skills, let's start with tier 1. Under each snare, deals moderate dark damage to when enemy applies nightmares. Eh, that's whatever. Life, lifeless is priceless. All enemies will die in 3 turns. Just like that. Wait, it has no cooldown. It's spammable and it costs no stamina. Even if you get your stamina drained, you can still apply the death countdown. How cool is that? Even if you get hit with cooldowns activated, you can still apply this. That is insane. That's awesome. I'm, I'm sucked into your lives. 50% chance of applying nightmares, 50% chance of curse, 50% chance of applying bleeding. So you might be thinking, armor, that sucks, 50% chance. Keep in mind, you give yourself true vision at the start of the battle. So that nightmares will probably land, the curse will land, the bleeding will land. Everything will probably land. All right, moving on to tier two. Pick and choose. Deals moderate special damage to all enemies. 50% chance of activating all cooldowns. Once again, it says 50%, but you have true vision. So that'll probably land. So this monster technically has an AoE cooldowns activated. Um, out of my cage applies possession to one enemy, applies reverse healing to all enemies. It's been a while since I've seen reverse healing. I've seen a gate healing, which basically makes healing zero, but reverse healing is so powerful, especially with relics in the game. If a monster has healing amulet, like that healing amulet, when the relic activates, that might kill them. If they have a major regeneration essence or any essence relic, like this goes actually quite powerful. I love it. Well, that's awesome. Like, let's say you're facing another peer side who has healing amulet and healing mask and they both trigger, but used out of my cage. Yeah, you're not going to land that possession, but maybe the reverse healing, you know, that can that can probably kill. That's awesome. Corruption in disguise deals moderate dark damage to all enemies applies curse. AoE curse. Curse is one of the most powerful DLTs in the game. If you don't know what curse does, well, get sit down and listen. Curse will take away 10% of HP and stamina okay and you're probably thinking oh that's not bad that's on turn one on turn two it doubles so it'll take away 20 percent of hp and stamina okay got pretty bad right on turn three it will double again taking away 40 percent of hp and stamina so in three turns it will take away 70 percent hp and 70 percent stamina that is crazy one of the best dots no monster is immune to curse currently all right, moving on to tier three skills. After seeing tier two and tier one, oh my gosh, what do we have to look forward to? That's the inner, applies true vision to itself. Okay, so this is in case your initial true vision runs out. Removes positive effects from one enemy. That's very good, especially with everything in the game right now. You know, you fight a Warmaster Ragnarok, you have to deal with a random status caster. If you fight Ramtar, you have to deal with skill mirror. If you fight Elvira, you have to deal with evasion. Any, um, if you fight Wasper, he has Evasion. If you fight Dunra, Megatons. If you fight Brutalis or Clippia, maybe they set up a Megatons. So removing positive effects, super useful. Applies Curse to one enemy, awesome. And you also apply Block positive effects. So after you remove that positive effect, the enemy won't be able to reapply something. So once again, let's say you do this against a Dunra or a Clippia. They're not going to be able to activate their Megatons again. That's awesome, and again, this skill will not miss. They're also going to get hit with Curse, so they're going to have to worry about getting their stamina drained 
and their HP, even if they're tanks, that's going to be depleting. Sit and lose. Activates all cooldowns on all enemies. All right, what the heck? I, I can't. I can't even. Activates all cooldowns on all enemies, and they die after three turns. This activates. This activates countdown, death countdown, and it. What the heck? This is so darn powerful. Especially because cooldowns activated still shuts down a lot of monsters. So I I I, I predict there's going to be an increase in like Sherizar usages because Sherizar at the start of the battle prevents you from getting your prevents you from getting hit by cooldowns activated and not to mention um you have great dispel which will remove the the curse countdown so yeah every you're gonna need a sherizard to battle this monster activates all cooldowns and all enemies all enemies will die after three turns on a monster that is the fastest dark monster in the game that's also super tanky that can also increase tankiness with the amulet and mask relic that can also drain stamina that can do so much more stuff that cannot miss what was social point thinking um possesses you will possesses you eh, possesses you with one go deals moderate direct damage to enemies applies possession to enemies applies nightmares to enemies oh my goodness this monster is so powerful so after you activate cooldowns right when the enemy's monsters if they waste their first turn recharging when they get their second turn in maybe they have a skill to use you can possess them all once again you have true vision so you're not missing you apply nightmares, so possession they're gonna waste stamina attacking themselves. Nightmares drains like what is it like 14 stamina per turn, and then you can do corruption in disguise, which will drain stamina. So the enemies always gonna have to be recharging stamina. They're dying in three turns. The cooldowns are activated. What is this monster? This monster is too powerful. What is this monster? And being able to swap skills, like if you find yourself in a situation where the enemy's going first, then you know, you can run Lifeless as Priceless from Skills Group 1 because it costs no stamina and... Gosh, what the heck is this monster? It's funny, a pure side versus a pure side, if you know the enemies is faster than you and you know the enemy is going to do sit and lose, you can run Lifeless as Priceless and hit them back. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, let me let me see. Looking through the skills, um, I mean, Tier Group 3 is, a, is an obvious must. That's the inner. I think that's the one you're going to be able to swap from time to time. Because again, the removing positive effects and applying curse is awesome, and and applying block positive effects is awesome. But I think most of the time you're gonna want to do sit and lose. You're gonna want to do possess you with one go, and you're gonna want to do a we curse, corruption in disguise. After that, it's up to you, right? Out of my cage can reverse healing, but do you really need to reverse healing when the curse countdown will kill them? Yeah, honestly, it's it's between that, like those three skills, and then pick and choose, um, corruption in disguise. I think a we curse is super powerful. So yeah, it might be all of skills group 3 and Corruption in Disguise, or you can probably do without, that's the inner, and do Sit and Lose, Possess You with One Go, Corruption in Disguise, and Out of My Cage. You can also swap in skills group 1 skills. Oh my goodness, this monster is so powerful. I have to spend all my gems to get her now. What in the world was Social Point thinking with this monster? My goodness. And let's talk about the ultimate. It's all in your head. Deals very heavy dark damage to all enemies. All right, applies mega possession. All right, all enemies will die after three turns. What the heck is this monster? Okay, so mega possession will possess the enemies for two turns. Okay, and during those two turns, they're wasting time attacking themselves. Uh, they die in three turns. So they die in three turns. Two of those turns are possessed. So they only, they really only have one turn to react. Oh, but don't forget that you can also activate their cooldowns. Don't forget that you can also activate Curse, which will drain their stamina and HP. You can apply Nightmares. What is this monster? Oh, I forgot to mention, you also block positive effects to all enemies. <laughs> what in the world? So it's not like they can set up an evasion. It's not like they can set up a skill. Man, what? I don't even know. This monster is so darn powerful. This is a must-have monster. This, this might be the one of the best monsters of 2019 i mean 2019 has been filled with a lot of incredible monsters i think when raw came out she really shined gorg just incredible attacker oh my god this is an incredible denier so we have an incredible tank we have an incredible attacker this is probably the best denier of 2019 and we're only we're only in may guys what is gonna happen in june july november december oh my goodness so yeah this has been a monster analysis on pure side let me know in the comments below what do you think about this monster? What skill set would you run? It goes without saying this is a three speed monster. Also, let me know, have you gotten 
one of the breedable monsters, a flawless a, a McBlood, a Krampus. How many times have you tried? How many gems have you invested? Are you going to keep trying? Like, what, what any and all thoughts you have on this monster, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you all next time.